Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and uh, we're going to tell a bit of a story today. Once upon a time there was a company called Algorithmic and they made products that people absolutely loved. They were a beloved company and they made products such as uh, Substance Painter and Substance Designer, great texturing tools, basically tools that push the entire industry forward. And then along came a company called Adobe. Everybody loves Adobe. Everybody out there cheered and cheered when Adobe bought Substance. Alright, I'm kidding. Nobody was really a huge fan of that acquisition, but since it happened, actually there haven't been a lot of dire changes, other than, of course, everything moved to a subscription model. So why am I talking about that today? Well, that company, Algorithmics, they still make products at Adobe, and one of those products is called Alchemist, and that's what we are looking at today. And this is a darned nice product. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do hands-on, take a look at what Alchemist is all about, and we'll go from there. So basically, if you've seen any of my videos on Mixer, you're going to immediately understand what Alchemist is. Alchemist and Mixer really kind of compete with each other, and if you are already using Substance's equal ecosystem, Alchemist is also replacing B2M. This is a tool for basically creating textures from textures. You've got things like Substance Designer, which is for creating materials from, well, basically nothing. And then you've got Substance Painter for painting them. This entire ecosystem works together, where a system Alchemist, Substance Alchemist, that is, is used to create textures mostly from other images, but there's also some generators in. We're going to see all of that in action. So here you can see Substance Alchemist. You can get a 30-day free trial of it if you want to go ahead and check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, pro actually, I'm not going to do a new project. I'll just do a new material. So start over here, create a brand new material. Here we are at the very beginning, and I'm going to showcase one of the brand new features that was released in uh, mid-June, and this is the big one and the big update here. It's their new uh, image-based, AI-based image processing. So here we can see a picture that I took. Uh, here we go. This is the brick down from my garage. It's just basically taken with a cell phone camera. It's got the normal lighting from the scene, etc. And I'm going to feed this image into Alchemist. So we're just going to take that. So here is Alchemist. Here is my image. And we're just going to drag and drop it in. Now what you're going to notice here is we've got a couple of options here. We've got multiple angle imports. We've got standard normalized texture imports. So if you've got your own collection of textures you want to use in Alchemist, you can just drop them all in this way. But the real one we're going to look at here is image to material. This is automatically creating a material. Um, and what you're going to notice here is the default down here, actually I don't think it's the default, I changed it over, is B2M. So the B2M technology has actually been rolled into Alchemist. But the one we're interested in today is the new AI powered. Uh, this allows you to generate high quality PBR output from a single input, basically artificial intelligence running on NVIDIA GPUs. Unfortunately, this only runs on the Windows and Linux versions with NVIDIA GPUs, and probably because Mac just basically doesn't have NVIDIA GPUs. But normally this tool, Substance Alchemist, runs on all three platforms, by the way. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do an image-powered import. I'm running this on a 1080i external GPU, and it's going to just go ahead and run. Uh, Skynet is now kind of calculating if it wants to kill society or how it's going to input this one. Hopefully it chooses the import as opposed to kill us all, but we will see how this turns out. So it's going to take a little bit of time. You see the counter is down here. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer than it normally does. By the way, on my 2070 laptop, this runs substantially faster. So it really does depend on the kind of GPU you are using. But here is the result. So here's where we started. We've got our uh, wall texture here. And what it's done is it's tried its best to remove all of the lighting from the scene. Here is a preview of what we look like. And this is not really ready to be used in a game in any shape, way, or form. But what I can do is I can come over here and we can switch some things out. Unfortunately, you can't do a custom mesh, but what we can do is a number of different things. So for example, on a material model, uh, we can bring it in and preview what our material looks like there. Now you're going to notice we've got a lot of ugly seams going on uh, in this guy, and that's probably not how we want to have it. So here's what it's done. You've got a little bit of control over it. So we can control the amount of normal intensity and the normal details like so. Now, it's doing some weird things on this guy. Let's go back to, we can go to a different thing. We can go to a t-shirt if we wanted. But you know what? Plain was actually a pretty good choice, as is a, a cube. So here's you can see our texture as it's being uh, manipulated out there. And it still doesn't look anything like my wall downstairs. And the worst part here is I definitely couldn't use this in any way, shape, or form um, on a tiled wall. So we're going to look at how we can go ahead and change that. We can also change out the ambient occlusion if we so wish. We can change out the roughness of our surface. We've got a fair bit of control over what the AI generated. 
So that's kind of the base importing process. But now what we can do is actually over here, you'll see we've got a stack of things going on and we can start adding stuff onto it. There's a couple different ways. You come right up here and add a layer in here. And this is basically a collection of all the layer options, but you can also grab them over here and you can get them organized into categories. Now, the first thing I want to do from a game development perspective is get this guy tiling. So we come up here, we can basically sort here. We'll search for tile and you'll see we've got make it tiled advanced. And I'm just going to basically drop this on here. It's going to drop it in as a new category. And now you're going to see all of a sudden those seams started going away. We've got some control over exactly how this is going to work. So we can change out the mask smoothness, the color equalization radius, chroma influence. So you see the edges on how it's going to creep in. And what this is doing is basically making it so this end here will blend with this end here. So what we can do is start tiling this guy in our game world. So for example, I can come down here and we can go, uh, is it environment? No, it's not. Uh, where did you go? Tiling, sorry, tiling category right here. And we can take a look at what the tiling would look like. So we're going to four by four tiling. And there you can see what your world looks like tiled. It's t default tiled to two by two. Here is completely untiled if you so wish. So you can see how the tiling will work and you can control it using this particular filter. So that kind of gives you a, a gist of what you could do. So now we took something that was uh, basically shot with a cell phone camera, imported it, it normalized the lighting for us. And now we've also made it tileable and haven't really done much work here. By the way, while we're over here, you'll notice we've got options for um, the environment map and such that's going to light our scenes. So if we want to change it out, we can do so. You're going to immediately see the results of that lighting there. We've also got the ability to look exclusively at 2D mode and 3D mode like so. So you can switch between or you can do a split hybrid, which tends to be the most useful. You can also look at individual channels if you so wish like so. All right. So now we've got this uh, imported in brick map that is ready to be used in the game. It's tileable. It's good to go. That's actually kind of impressive at this point in time. So now what we could do is start modifying. I'm going to get out of here and you're going to notice here uh, we've got things. So here's the scan processing. This is the stuff for like uh, changing how the imported work. We could do some things like we could have cropped it. And again, the whole stack is non-destructive going from the bottom to the top. And you can also reverse that if you so wish. Uh, so you've got control over tiling. You've got control over equalization, delighting. So if we want to take some of the lighting out of the scene, we can do so. Although I do believe the AI process does that for you as well. But if you wanted further control, you could drop that in there. But now what we're going to do is go ahead and add some uh, some effects to this guy. So we got our wall. It might look a little bit too clean. So let's drop a dirt layer in there. So we can drop dirt in there. You see immediately the result. We can change the quantity of dirt like so. So that is at kind of how easy it is to start modifying. Let's say now it's winter. So we're going to drop in some snow. Now snow is not going to show up that great because of the um, uh, amount of uh, lightness that was in our tile to start with. But we can go here. We can change the amount of snow that is being added in the scene. And we could also go ahead and now say and add some moss in. So let's go here, kill that filter down. Let's go ahead, search for moss. There we go. So let's drop some moss in our scene. And what you may want to do is you got choice inclusion or you could put it overall just to kind of have moss everywhere. Probably not what you want to do. So this will take the occlusion calling into effect and basically start following the cracks in the scenes and the sem um, the the surface of the material and you can start dropping some moss in as well. So that's kind of how everything works. You basically take your raw image in and you pass it through an artificial intelligence layer that will equalize the light, make it kind of ready to go. You can start dropping in filters and so on to do things again, like make it tileable, ready to work in games. You can stitch things together. Uh, we could do some wear on it. Uh, there's, there's actually a, like a ton of features and drop in stuff you could do here. Or another thing we can do, and we'll start this from the very beginning, is we can actually make a, a, a complete texture from scratch pretty much procedurally. So I go back here, we've got the resource. You're going to notice I have a number of uh, base materials to work from. I could also come in here. We could start from a generator as well. There's a handful of them. These are things like uh, leaves and textures and so on. You can bring in stuff from substance itself. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the starter base materials though. And you can notice here we've got uh, various different things here like uh, sand and plastic or whatever. So if I just wanted to start with sand, I could bring in sand. So you could go ahead and create these materials using something like Substance Designer, obviously, or you could bring in your own texture material. Start from there. And you've got some uh, controls over the various different uh, generators that go together to make this guy. We also can do random seeds right here. And you can basically start layering out that way. Or we can go um, from, we can start with this and now we can go back here to our filters. You're going to notice we've also got generators. So with the generators, they're right here. We can do things like create uh, patterns and so on. Stone wall pattern. And let's go ahead. We'll drop a stone wall pattern in here. And there you see we're using our base sand layer underneath that's right here. And then we're kind of superimposing this stone wall on top of it. So we just created this, this really cool stone wall. We can change out the more thickness pretty easily. So you get kind of a lightweight procedural generator in here as well. And you can again, start applying things on top of this. So if we wanted to go ahead 
and say add a blur to this, we can just drop the blur in. Again, non-destructive stack. Now, obviously, that is awfully blurry. And we had a number of different generators in there. So we could have done things like we could have brought in our own uh, base material as well. And they all kind of start layering and working together. Another cool thing that we've got going on is you can actually bring in stuff and use masks. So let's go and drop just a generic paint layer on top. So we want to drop some paint in here. So let me find paint. P-A-I-N-T. Yeah, I do know how to spell. So there we go. We just drop some paint in here. Uh, that was a little vicious paint. So let's go ahead and make this like a dark blue. Okay, so there you see, we just basically painted everything bright blue. It's probably not how you would actually want to do it. So what we're going to do is instead go to the mask. We're going to say, turn on the mask. And now where we paint while we're doing this, we can say, okay, let's say we want to make this particular brick blue. And we can do so. And that might be a little jarring in our texture, as you can see, but you can mask things out pretty easily and you just start dropping a blur in around that mask. And you probably get it to look a little bit nicer in your end results. You can also say, okay, we want that to be, for some reason, a super metallic brick. We can change out the roughness. We can drop down the paint roughness and so on. So you've got the ability to use masks uh, and direct painting directly within your texture if you so wish to do it. And that is essentially the tool. There, there's quite a bit of capability here. The one thing that seems to be glaringly lacking is you can't import your own mesh, but that's, that's a pretty small thing. Now, when you're interested in actually getting it out, it's not really immediately intuitive how you get things out of here. I can save this guy. It'll show up down here as a thumbnail. But if you want to go ahead and export something out, come down here and right click the, the collection that this is what you create when you create a new material. I come here and I basically go, I want to export this guy out. Now you can see the, dis the distinct one in, or the, the default one here is Substance Archive. And that'll go through their entire ecosystem. And there's actually some third party tools that support this as well. But if you want, you can go ahead and export them as JPEGs up to 4K in texture, and then pick the channels that you want to go ahead and export. So if you don't care about specularity, you can turn that off, for example. But pick all the things you want to do, pick the location you want to export it out, and then click Export, and then boom, it, all the maps that were generated as part of this process will be exported out to that directory. So that is, in a nutshell, the very basics of Substance Alchemist. In some ways, you could basically just use this as a way to bring in your textures, do quick markups to them, and save them. And that's it. Now, the questions that you may have is, okay, that was um, Alchemist. How do I go ahead and buy this guy? So if you're interested in Substance Alchemist, there's a bit of an overview of what it's all about. Uh, we kind of saw most of that. So I'm going to gloss over that. But instead, we're going to go to the buying section. And now this is part, it's kind of fortunate and unfortunate. You can easily get this guy if you are already a Substance subscriber. And there's the Adobe influence. Yes, the word subscriber came up. So if you subscribe to uh, the Substance package, you already get this. So this is actually included. So if you get Substance uh, Painter or Substance Designer, you get Substance Alchemist. Unfortunately, you can't buy it on your own. You used to be able to buy B2M on its own, but you can't get this guy on your own. You might be wondering, okay, Okay, well, you can get perpetual licenses for Substance Painter and Substance Designer on Steam. What about Alchemist? Nope. So the only way to pick this guy up is as part of a license in your plan. But if you have a license, if you are a part of the subscription, you're getting this guy for free. So a bit of a double-edged sword. In terms of pricing, if you make under 100 k you can get the indie license, which is going to include Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Alchemist for 20 bucks a month. Uh, the Pro license is $100 a month. Enterprise license, if you make more than $100 million a year, uh, it's going to cost you more. So basically, that is it. We got deals for students, including uh, free versions, which is definitely nice to see. So if you are a student, you can get it for free. Now, you're going to notice over here, and you're going to think, OK, great, a perpetual license. Well, this is what I was talking about earlier on. This is like kind of a buy one and own it forever approach. The only way you can currently buy substance products is uh, for perpetual, I mean, is via Steam. Unfortunately, there is no... Alchemist. So this is for designer and painter only, which is kind of the unfortunate thing here. But yeah, that is it. If you're interested, one of the things and the reasons why I'm covering this at this point that I am is on June the 15th, that is where they released this new update. And the big thing here is the image to material has an AI option. You get a bit more details about how it works, the various different options that you have available. There are a couple of other pretty major things added in this release. Easy to use textures from anywhere, uh, create unique materials with the new editor tools. We've got... Um, uh, the big one is the new paint tools were just added here as well, I believe. So uh, there was quite a bit added in this particular release, uh, especially that new AI-powered image import. And that seems to sort of be the way that things are going right now. Mixer kind of has that approach. This definitely has that approach. And then there was the, the company that Unity bought. And I think that was the entire idea behind it as well. So um, this could be the future of how texture is working. And I actually have to say, as someone who just kind of wants things to just work, the fact that I can take a photo, have it deal with the lighting for me, and send it into my um, 
you know, have it kind of used as a game ready texture within a couple of seconds, that is powerful to me, especially because I don't want to mess around with creating these tools. And if you want to get into the fine tune level of control, you're probably looking at more something like Substance Designer. But what I'm seeing here, I am definitely impressed with. Now, unfortunately, Adobe, but yeah, that that's just part of the world, I guess. So let me know what you think of this, of Substance Alchemist in general, and of course, of the subscription only approach. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.